Good morning. Uh, well, thank you, Simon. Uh, basically, you uh, spoiled the entire talk. <laughs> it's OK. Um, yeah, I'll be talking about Flexbox. Um, just for fun, let's see. Uh, who has never done something with Flexbox yet? Cool. Uh, who uh, started playing with it but still doesn't believe it's ready for production? And then who is working with it regularly? Cool. So. The last group, um, it's, this is supposed to be an introduction, so uh, I hope uh, I can still learn you something. But the first two groups, uh, you, you'll be fine. We'll just uh, tackle this one bit at a time. Uh, first, a little bit about myself. Uh, like Simon said, I'm a, a WordPress developer and entrepreneur. Um, I'm mostly involved in, uh, in, in front-end development. And if you have any questions afterwards, uh, of course, you can come find me and ask those questions. But uh, it's such a huge conference. If you have any questions and you can find me, please look me up on Twitter. It's by far the easiest way to get in touch with me. Um, this is uh, our company. It's called Chef du Web. Despite the name, we're, we're very, uh, very Dutch. And we started working with Flexbox um, about a year ago, I guess. Um, and for us, it's changed the way we work quite a bit. It's very cool when a, a new tool can uh, basically alter the way you, you uh, view life. <laughs> so, I wanted to start by giving a bit of the scope of this talk. Um, we're going to be talking mainly about CSS. So this is the only slide I'll mention WordPress. Um, Obviously, uh, uh, learning Flexbox is uh, uh, beneficial to you uh, even without knowing WordPress, but I hope everyone in this room knows why it's important that well-functioning themes and uh, responsive, uh, uh, responsive themes are, uh, are important to, to understand. So, yeah, CSS is definitely awesome, but I'm going to argue that Flexbox is awesomer. Um, we're going to be looking at three main things uh, regarding Flexbox, and it's the three basic things that Flexbox does very well. It's distribution of elements, alignment of elements, and the ordering of elements. And with elements, I mean divs and stuff like that, obviously. Um, it does all these three things uh, with a, a special nod towards responsive design. So it was really built for the responsive web. And that's because what we've been doing is kind of weird if you think about it. Right now, most of you use uh, floats to get columns next to each other. Um, you clear those floats and you start a new row. And that all works fine, but it's kind of hacking CSS because that's not what floats were meant for. Floats were meant for uh, um, block items to get text beside them. Um, and if anybody mentions tables, I'll, uh, I'll, walk, I'll walk out. <laughs> now, one of, the, um, uh, one of the things we've tried to, uh, to introduce to our workflows is, is frameworks. So who here works with Bootstrap, uh, found, uh, Foundation, Inuit? Yeah. I've, uh, I've tried them all. They all have the same problem, in my opinion, and that's this, the, the entire class structure. It's not very semantic. This uh, call large four, call medium six, it doesn't tell me anything about what's inside that div and why it's important. And if you think about it, this is basically the same as inline styling, right? I, I don't have to go to my CSS file to, uh, uh, to change the look and feel of a div. I have to go into my HTML. Um, so this is a big problem with the, uh, with the current frameworks. And Having a tool like Flexbox to um, uh, really get your CSS into your CSS is, uh, uh, is pretty nice. So the, those were the big issues I have with the, with the current state of, uh, let's say, regular CSS. Um, now let's get to the good stuff. I'll first start with a little bit of history because I feel it's important uh, by understanding if you really want to understand Flexbox, it's, uh, it's nice to know a bit of the history. Um, in 2009, 
the first spec was released. It was called, the, the spec was called Flexbox, but uh, the uh, display uh, method was called Box. Everybody was on board, uh, Safari, Chrome, I think it, Chrome didn't even exist then. Um, Firefox, can anybody guess who wasn't on board? <laughs> yeah. So in 2011, Microsoft created their own spec, saying, um, well, display box isn't really very semantic. It's not very descriptive of what you're trying to do. So they actually had a good point. They said, let's call it display flex box, because that's much easier. I mean, what's the difference between display box and display block, right? It's, it's kind of crazy. And now, finally, at uh, this moment, everybody's on the same page. Everybody's saying, we're going for display flex. Um, and display flex has, I'm going to do this live, currently a market share of, yeah, there we go. Come on. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's currently a market share of uh, uh, 49%. Or oh, 94, I'm sorry. 94. So that's, that's already uh, a huge part of the internet, right? Um, IE9 uh, and IE8 obviously aren't on board. IE10 is if you use uh, the right uh, prefixes and stuff. Um, so I'll be getting back to that problem of IE9 and IE8 later, seeing how you can uh, get around that. First, I'd like uh, all of you to join me in a prayer towards the gods of CodePen, because now I'm going to do a little demo. Um, let's see. Can you all see it? Do I need to zoom? I can zoom. There we go. So I have some uh, HTML here. It's, uh, uh, it's just a row with four columns. And uh, the CSS involved is uh, very basic. It's a, a regular uh, display block row with uh, four regular display block columns. Um, they're all floating. They're all, they all have a width of 23.5%. They have a margin right of two. And then the last column has a margin right of zero, um, making a full 100. Well, the big problem with this stuff is basically is that it's not very, uh, not very flexible because if I add a column now, stuff breaks. See? If I uh, take one out, it doesn't break, but it doesn't look as nice. So, um, obviously, most of you had I've had troubles with, with clients asking for a column to be removed if the site's already live, or it can bring a whole lot of hassle. And Flexbox solves this quite handsomely. Um, let me start by putting align items flex start here. We'll get to that in a minute. And then we'll say display flex on the row. So it's a uh, it's on the parents. The, the children are flex items. The row is a flex box. Uh, obviously, nothing changes because the width and the float are still in place. But if I just add flex one, we have the same uh, exact situation as we had before, but now in flex box. And now, if I add a column, they'll just shrink. If I remove a column, it'll fill itself out. So what does this flex one really mean? Um, it basically says, scale me as much as the other elements in this flex box. So uh, I, I've compared it to water. It's, uh, it just looks at the pixels that are defined hard, like our, uh, like our margin right of 2%. Uh, subtracts that from the entire width of the flex box and then uh, divvies, it up, uh, divvies it up among all the children. Um, and if I add a little class here, featured. Let's turn the background a bit black so you guys can see. 
And if I turn the flex to two, you'll see it just grows to twice the size of the other elements. So uh, we can have proportion, uh, proportions in this as well. Um, but that's not really the entire story. Flex one is just a shorthand version of uh, three parameters, flex grow, flex shrink, and flex base. Uh, grow basically means I'm allowed to grow as much as the other elements. Shrink means I'm allowed to shrink as much as the other elements. And base is either a minimum width or a maximum width in this case. So let's see. Oh. If I uh, set flex grow to one, flex shrink to zero, and say flex base to 100 pixels, um, Nothing changes because my flex boxes are allowed to grow across the entire container. But then there's still that 100 pixels declaration. So if I uh, change the width of our row here, you see stuff overflows. They have a minimum width of 100 pixels. If I switch these up and say flex grow 0, flex shrink 1, and 100 pixels, it'll act like a maximum width. So they'll just be smaller. Um, so that allows you for some very fine-grained control, and uh, you can use these uh, tools to basically already start uh, um, scaling stuff responsive, uh, responsively with one line of code. So a quick sum up. Uh, flex one means scale me as much as the other elements. Flex uses smart scaling, so it's uh, just uh, gets the entire width that's available and, and divides it up between its children. And, have, and then we have grow, shrink, and base, which, use, uh, which you can use to uh, get fine green control. Now our second demo, alignment. I'll take a sip, prepare yourself, because this is the one that usually uh, makes the jaws drop. So. Here we are. I've um, added flex start to align items, and that was an alignment thing. Flex, uh, we also have flex end, which means it's, it'll jump to the bottom of the entire container. And we also have flex center. Who among you has had trouble uh, aligning something vertically in CSS? One, two, three, everyone, okay. Screams of terror, yeah. Um, this is how you do that. And um, let's see. Then the default of align items is stretch. So it just stretches out the entire container. Now, how does this work? Um, basically, Flexbox uses accesses to, uh, to align its items. So right now, we have a, a Flexbox in a, 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 like a row, so a row of columns. And uh, its main axis is a horizontal axis. But it also has a secondary axis, which in this case is the vertical one. Align items allows you to align stuff on the secondary axis. So if uh, this was a column with all of the boxes stacked on top of each other, the secondary axis would be horizontal. Um, let's see. Yeah, the default was a flex stretch, of an align item stretch. And this even works if we have our, um, our featured column here. Um, background and min height, let's put it to 300. There we go. So uh, one column changes height, and the others just, just grow with it. And there's nothing I have to do here. There's no JavaScript I need to run to check which one is the biggest. and. Uh, all that alignment stuff is taken care of, right of the, out of the box. Let me see. Um, I'll get rid of this height. And also, yeah, uh, align items flex like start. Okay. So, like I said, we have uh, the secondary axis where we can uh, uh, align things on the, uh, vertical, uh, uh, the vertical way. We also have, obviously, the horizontal way. And you do that with justify content. Justify 
content. The default of which is flex start. It's just at the start of the, of the entire flex box. We also fl have flex end, meaning it'll jump to the end. And then I think we also have center. So perfectly aligned centered objects in CSS are quite possible, as you can see. But I think the coolest one by far is uh, space between awesome. So now it'll just, we don't even need the margin right anymore. We can just remove that and Flexbox will do all the gutter calculations for us. Okay. Um, if we now put this to 23.5% and remove our margins, now we actually have the same exact setup as we had before, just completely flexible. The thing is, if I start adding columns now, stuff breaks again, or rather, it's, they shrink, and it's over. So how are we going to solve this issue? Well, first of all, let's put shrink to zero, meaning that they'll actually be 23.5%, and then we can put flex flow on the parent, and it'll just start a new row. It's quite easy. So we, we do not even need uh, um, row divs anymore. Has anybody in PHP uh, iterated through posts and uh, yeah, started a row div? Not necessary. Hmm. Come on. There we go. So a quick sum up. Um, Alignment in Flexbox is completely access-based. Uh, beware that uh, accesses uh, tend to differ when you have a column or a row display mode. Um, align items allows you to align stuff on the secondary axis, and justify content allows you to align stuff on the main axis. And with FlexFlow, you get the power to basically add new rows as you go. So your content can grow as big as you want, CSS will have your back. The third demo is actually the shortest because it's, it's quite easy. It's ordering. And um, it used to be that only in, in HTML uh, you could like, order a, a, a column or get, get a column up front. Right now you can just do that with Flexbox, saying order minus one, and it'll jump to the top of the stack. Um, this needs a little uh, side note, though, because order is by far the, the biggest uh, bug nest in, uh, uh, in Flexbox itself. I think uh, the guys from Yoast found a bug with a, a numbered list where uh, the numbers didn't change, but the location of a list did. Um, stuff like uh, column first of type, doesn't really work anymore. I mean, if I set the background to blue now, the actual first column will get a blue column. So keep that in mind when you're using order. It can be very handy, especially when you're making uh, a responsive layout and you need certain content to be more available uh, uh, at the top on a mobile screen. So the order property, it's quite simple. Uh, you, can, uh, you can check that out yourselves. I told you I was going to um, talk a bit about how we handle IE9 and IE10. Um, so this is more of the, the, the practical stuff. Um, one of the things we need to take into account is that Flexbox has had three different specs over a period of 10 years. So this is going to be prefix hell. Um, this is just one declaration, Flexbox, and it's seven lines of code. I mean, a regular, normal uh, Flexbox container, I mean, this scrolls, look at this. I'm, I'm never going to type this, right? Uh, so we do need to look into some auto-prefixing uh, solutions for this. Who, who among you is using a, a CSS preprocessor, like SAS or LAS? 
Okay, that's the, the vast majority. Awesome. Keep up the good work. Um, you guys mainly have to, don't have to do anything. There's an auto prefixer available for SAS and LAS, and if you're using uh, uh, like a, a framework like Bourbon or Compass, it'll do all that stuff for you. If you're uh, writing regular CSS, have a look at Grunt or Gulp. They can help you uh, auto prefix these, uh, these lines of Flexbox. And the way we handle IE9, uh, like Simon said, I, I own a company, so we need to, to uh, dance to uh, the client's wishes, obviously. But mainly what we do is we sit the client down and we tell them, this is a new technology. We want to work in, uh, with this. We can uh, be a lot quicker. It'll be a lot cheaper for you. Uh, if you do need that IE9 and IE10 support, we can definitely do that, but it'll just cost more. And uh, one of the things most clients will say is, okay, we totally get it, don't worry, with, uh, don't worry about it. I mean, it's, once you explain to them that they're pouring money into a dying platform, they'll, they'll, be, uh, they'll be okay about it. Uh, there's usually one group of clients that uh, demands uh, IE9 support, and that's uh, like local government. Um, but they know about this stuff, they usually have the budgets for this stuff, and they can, uh, uh, they can definitely pay more, uh, at least they're willing to pay more. So, you really have no excuse anymore. It's 94% uh, uh, 90, of the web is already using this. We can start using this now. I hope everyone is uh, blown away by uh, what the flexibility that Flexbox offers, and I hope You'll have nicer bike rides to the office without the dread of uh, client, uh, client stuff. Okay. I've added some further reading to these slides. I'll, uh, I'll um, share these slides online. Uh, some, uh, the, the Flexbox guide by CSS Tricks is very, very excellent. It's a very clear, uh, um, very clear explanation. And because I didn't, I didn't even. Deal with, uh, dealt with like 10% of, uh, of the entire spec. There's way more out there. Uh, another cool thing is Flexbox Froggy. You can learn Flexbox by playing, uh, playing a game. You need to get the little frog onto the lily, lily pad using Flexbox. Very awesome, especially the last, uh, last level. It's insanely difficult. So thank you. <laughs>